Right here, I have a brand new high-end Gen 4 NVMe SSD from Crucial, the T500. Now, Crucial already had a very decent entry-level option, the P3 series. Uh, they already had a decent mid-range option, the P5 Plus, and they even released a really high-end Gen 5 drive, the T700. But until now, they actually never had anything to compete with a really high-end Gen 4 drives like the Samsung 990 Pro or the WD SN850X. Now, I was not really expecting that Gen 4 SSDs can get much better than they already are, but this drive offers impressive performance, especially when it comes to gaming, and it also happens to be the best SSD I've tested so far when it comes to thermal performance. So without further ado, uh, let's check out this T500 and let's see how good it actually is. Let's begin. The Crucial T500 will be launching in 500GB, 1TB and 2TB capacities and they mentioned that a 4TB version will be available sometime next year. The 500GB model will always come without a heatsink, while the larger capacities will be available either with or without a heatsink. And while some other brands have heatsinks that can easily be removed, this one cannot. So, if you plan on using your motherboard's heatsink at some point, uh, you should not buy the heatsink version because, as you can see here, the heatsink is really stuck on there. And if you maybe somehow manage to pry it open, it will void your warranty, so do keep that in mind. I really do like the design of both versions, uh, with the heatsink and without. Uh, there are no flashy colors or anything overboard, just a simple design with a crucial logo and a model number. That's it. The 2TB version I have here is single-sided, so laptop compatibility should not be an issue, but it is still unclear if the 4TB model will be single-sided or not. I'm also quite happy that Crucial is being very open when it comes to specs. Uh, they specified that they're using a Fison E25 controller and their own 232-layer 3D TLC memory, as well as 1GB of DRAM cache per terabyte capacity, and the drive also uses SLC caching, so this is everything a high-end drive should have. You also get a 5-year long warranty with a 600 terabytes written endurance rating per terabyte of capacity as well, which is again what you would expect from a high-end drive. The only thing that isn't mentioned anywhere is encryption, so if that is something that is important to you, I would suggest you look for an alternative that does mention encryption support explicitly. But let's see how this drive performs, and as always I'm going to start with the PCMark 10 Quick Benchmark, which is actually a collection of tests that simulate uh, all those little things we do with our PCs on a daily basis. Uh, working with documents, for example, uh, looking at your photos, loading games, and so on. And this is a very, a very useful benchmark to look at if you're looking for a secondary drive or an extra SSD for those uh, simple little tasks. And the T500 is the first drive that managed to knock the 990 Pro down a spot. It was only about 1% faster, but it was still technically ahead, while the gap with other high-end Gen 4 drives was actually pretty large. Uh, Gen 5 SSDs are still faster, but do keep in mind that those will cost you a lot more than Gen 4 drives. Full PC Mark 10 Suite is a test that imitates a more serious, more intense and more constant use of your system and this is a great benchmark for anyone uh, that is looking for a new main drive or for anyone that needs to run some applications that can be very heavy on the SSD, uh, like editing videos for example. And the T500 does great here yet again. It is ahead of the 990 Pro by a decent margin this time around and it is comfortably ahead of every other Gen 4 SSD in the list, including some excellent options like like the SN850X, the Fury Renegade, KC3000, and so on. And the result is very similar if we look at the latency as well. Gen 5 SSDs are a bit faster, but the T500 is ahead of all Gen 4 drives. The consistency test isn't that relevant for a lot of you because it simulates a very extreme, a multi-hour long workload that most of you don't really do, uh, but it is still very good to see how it holds up when you really stress it for a very long period of time. And here, the T500 did drop a couple of spots, but it is still in a very good place. The 990 Pro really shines in these extreme scenarios, but the T500 holds up really well, landing right next to the Fury Renegade and the Corsair MP600 Pro, and scoring a few bonus points against the SNA50X and the KC3000 that are further down the list. 
The 3 d Mark Storage Benchmark is a bundle of tests that include a lot of gaming-related tasks, so things like loading games, installing games, recording gameplay, and just moving games around. And this is a very useful benchmark to look at if you're going to use this drive mainly for gaming. And when it comes to gaming, the T500 takes the Gen 4 crown here. The SNA50X was the top Gen 4 SSD for a very, very long time, but the T500 does significantly better, and it even beats the Gen 5 T700 with only the Gen 5 Corsair MP700 being ahead of it. That makes it the fastest Gen 4 SSD that I've tested so far. And if we just look at gaming results that I personally think are most important for most people, which is uh, loading times, installation times, and update times, it ended up scoring about 114% of the SN850X, so for future videos, the T500 here will become the new benchmark standard for other drives to compare themselves to. Sequential read and write performance numbers uh, don't really represent real-life use as well as previous tests do, but it is still a very useful metric for some people. And in sequential writes, the T500 does sit just under what we've seen from some other Gen 4 SSDs, but it is still very close to the overall Gen 4 limit. And if we look at sequential reads, it is near the top, uh, running into the same limit as other Gen 4 drives. So between all of them at the top, it doesn't really matter, they're all the same. This also puts it way ahead of Sony's recommended specification for their consoles, so with that, plus the excellent gaming performance, uh, plus the RAM cache, plus a nice and thin heatsink, the T500 here is an excellent choice for PlayStation 5 use. Now, in almost every Gen 4 and Gen 5 review, I've always said the same thing. Fast NVMe SSDs do get very hot, and you should always consider a heatsink with some airflow above it but the T500 here doesn't get hot at all. And after stressing it without a heatsink and without any airflow, the T500 was bouncing between 50 and 65 degrees on the internal sensors and between 57 and 62 degrees on the FLIR camera images. And the heatsink version was consistently sitting in the low 50s. And this is very unusual because most SSDs will easily hit 80 degrees in this test within minutes and then especially so when it comes to high-end models like the 990 Pro, for example, that reported almost 100 degrees in no time whatsoever. So the T500 is just excellent when it comes to thermal performance, which makes it really interesting if you want a proper fast SSD for your laptop as well. Now, I would still put it under a heatsink if you can easily do so, because uh, most motherboards do come with a heatsink anyway. And if you live in a very hot climate, or if you plan on putting it in a PlayStation 5 that offers uh, zero airflow, it will still help a bit. But if your specific use case doesn't allow the use of a heatsink, the T500 here looks way better than any other SSD, in my opinion. Now, these drives are launching today, and even though Crucial did communicate some prices. Uh, they also did say that they would probably cost less in actual shops, and I really hope that that will be the case, because uh, they actually suggested that the 500 gigabyte model should cost you 155 euros, which is insane, because that is what you have to pay for a 2 terabyte 980 Pro or the WD SN 850X at the moment. And that is just way too much, uh, no matter how fast the drive is. But Crucial also has a very good history of being extremely price competitive with their SSDs, so I do think it is safe to say that the T500 will end up in a very normal price range very quickly. And when that happens, it will be the Gen 4 SSD to go for for almost every use case. Now, if I had to nitpick, I would say that I wish the heatsink was removable instead of a fixed one that will void your warranty, and that they should look into encryption a bit more for people that find that important. But other than that, uh, this is an extremely fast Gen 4 SSD, especially in games, and a rare fast drive uh, where you don't have to worry about thermal. So if the price is right, it is a very, very easy recommendation for everyone. This video is brought to you by Corsair and their Virtuoso Pro gaming headset. With its open back design and 50mm graphene drivers, it offers an excellent sound quality in games, movies, as well as music. It is very light and extremely comfortable, and you can easily adjust it to very small as well as very large heads. 
You can also easily replace the cables, uh, ear pads, headband and covers, making repairs and maintenance easier than ever. Check them out using the links in the description below. Now that is all I had for this video, uh, do let me know in the comments down below what you think about this drive and if this is something that you would like to get for your own PC. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this one, please do consider clicking that subscribe button so you don't miss my future uploads. Bye guys and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!